of the Lord until he come. So communion, therefore, is an incorporation to the higher life of Christ, but inasmuch as we have to go back into the world, we're going to take with him our death. This is the Mass. Do you know that I believe that when we go before the judgment seat of God, our greatest regret is not that we were more faithful to the holy sacrifice of the Mass. What a blessing is our faith. Now, I have no reason to assume, absolutely none, to assume that you good people are not at Mass every morning. Every morning I've been here, look at the crowds. Now, I'm glad to see that you people are, are attendants at daily Mass. This is marvelous. I wouldn't come back some morning, sneak up on you to see if you were here. I wouldn't do that. I just assume that you would be. Now, I hope I've made this clear to you, young people especially, what the Mass is. Always think of it as three acts. And how you are united with the cross of our Lord. But since I, I have been tiring to you, and even at the risk of keeping you a little longer, I'm going to tell you a, a story about the Mass and the Eucharist. This incident happened in China. A bishop was arrested by the communists, put in prison, and he told one of the missionary sisters to whom he gave the tabernacle key to remove the Blessed Sacrament from the chapel. It was on the second floor of his house, lest it be defiled by the communists who would take over his residence. The bishop was in prison for two or three years. He wasted away to skin and bones, wore a black stocking cap, a black kimono, was too weak to stand. During the few moments of the day, they were released from the prison. In the prison yard, he had to be supported by two fellow communist, or rather Chinese prisoners. The nun went to the chapel took the Blessed Sacrament, but she hid it in a loaf of bread. And as she closed the door of the chapel and was about to come down, a communist colonel came up the stairs and said, I'm taking over this house. I have the key to the chapel. He tried to open the door and it would not open. He said, here, you open it. She said, I can't. My hands are filled with bread. Put the bread on the stairs. She said, the stairs are dirty. Then give me the bread. She said she reached him, the Blessed Sacrament, hidden in the bread, with such reverence and fear that he laid hold of the loaf as if it might have been a baby. But he cocked a gun in case she should turn on him. And then he gave back the Blessed Sacrament. The nun was later on put in prison, beaten with rods, and underwent a kind of a bloody sweat from the terrific agony. Finally came the death march, and the bishop was put out in the march between two fellow Chinese prisoners. The communist colonel took a sack that was loaded with perhaps stones, weighed about 20 or 30 pounds, and tied it on the bishop's back, 
and then tied the rope in such a fashion that the weight would tighten the rope and he would eventually be choked to death in the march. But the communist would not kill anyone. The sister who told me this story was back in the line of march and she saw the communist colonel tie this bag around his neck and she broke the line of march and she said, don't do that. Look at the man. It was a kind of an H.A. homo. The communist colonel looked at her and then to the face of the bishop and seemed to see pain for the first time in his life. And he called her a dog and told her to get back in line. She watched the weaving of the prisoners as they made their death march. And after a, a mile or two, she caught sight of the bishop, still supported by the two fellow Chinese prisoners, but the sack was not on his back. It was on the back of the communist colonel. I said, why did the communist colonel take it off his back, off the bishop's back? And she said, because he once carried the blessed sacrament. The last we know of that communist colonel is that he was put in prison for helping the bishop. The bishop died on the death march. The sister today is still bearing the effects of it. And this bishop in prison, she told me, used to read mass. He was the only one in prison who was ever given wine. Not through any act of charity on the part of the communists. This was just divine providence making it possible for him to say mass. And she said no mass in the Gothic cathedral surrounded by all the pomp of liturgy could ever equal the beauty of this frail bishop, full of prison vermin and sores, leaning up against a wall with a tin tray and loaf of bread and a small glass of rice wine. Moving his fingers over the tin tray and then pronouncing the words of consecration and during the day secretly giving communion to prisoners who would pronounce the right word, the cold word which was the same code word in the early church, fish. Why fish? Well, the Greek word for fish is ichthos. And in our letters, I-X-T-H-U-S, ichthos. And in the early church, the I stood for Jesus, the X for Christus, the Theu of God, U for we are Son, S for Sator, Savior, Jesus Christ, Son of God, Savior of the world. Then I could tell you, too, of the way that Mass was read at Dachau under the threat of the Nazis and how priests underwent every kind of torture to make it possible to offer the holy sacrifice of the Mass. You're really assisting at Calvary. Realize its meaning. For there's a law that runs all through nature. We live by what we slay. The food that we have torn up from the earth, the animals, that have been butchered. We live by what we slay. And through the marvelous paradox of divine grace, we who have crucified Christ by our sins, now through the mercy of communion, live